Okay, that was the easy part. Uh, now we get to the really fun stuff. Uh, metaprogramming, which in my view in Ruby is sort of all programming. And uh, I thought I'd motivate this one with an example. Uh, suppose we wanted to take our simple bank account class and make it international friendly. So instead of just saying I can deposit $100, well, suppose I want to be able to deposit euros. Um, I could do that. I could write a method called euros to dollars. And yeah, no. Okay, that's <laughs> ugly, right? That's kind of, that's a brain dead, that's a programmer way to write things. And in a tip of the hat to our graphic designer of our book, uh, we are interested in code that is beautiful. What would we prefer to be able to write when depositing euros, let's say, into our account? Well, it would be nice if we could just do that. Okay, well, that's cool. We could do that. Uh, with open classes, it's not a problem, right? With great power comes great responsibility. We'll just reopen the numeric class, and we're going to add a euros method to it, which will just multiply it by the conversion factor between dollars and euros. Simple method. Uh, and in fact, let's uh, head over to Pastebin. And again, we're going to cut and paste the code so we can actually try this live so that you believe it works. There is the one-click copy. Go over to the Ruby interpreter. OK. So does this really work? Can you guys all see this? Does this really work? Yep, it works. Five euros is about 650. <laughs> Them were the days. OK, so, OK, well, that's pretty cool. We, we're feeling clever, and, and we've, we've got some beautiful code going on. Uh, but what happens if we now try to say deposit one euro? OK, well, that's too bad, because the method name ends in S. Uh, so what could we do here? Well, we could create another method, but I think you see where I'm going, uh, if I can find the right URL. Uh, sorry. I apologize. My machine is only like three gigahertz, so I can't do this very fast. <laughs> okay. Here's what, el here's what else we could do. And let's make this a little bit... We'll just use method missing to solve the problem for us. Okay, so method missing is the method that Ruby arranges to call if you try to do a method that doesn't exist. Right? That whatever class the uh, receiver is on, uh, if there's a method missing defined in that class, method missing will get control. And in fact, uh, although we don't care about the arguments, method missing gets past the name of the method you tried to call, which doesn't exist, and all of the arguments that the method would have received. And it's up to you to decide what to do with it. You could do nothing, and the default thing that, that happens, the default implementation of method missing, just punts up to the superclass, hoping somebody else can handle it. But we're going to just do this really simple thing. If we try to call the missing method and its name happens to be euro, We'll just take whatever self is, whoever received the bad method call, and we'll resend the new message, euros, which does exist. OK, so let's grab that. Copy that to the clipboard. Go to the terminal window. Go to the terminal window. <laughs> Sorry, it reduces the drama a little bit when... Uh... OK, paste. And now, can we say, let's clear the screen for a dramatic effect. Where is my cursor? <laughs> there. Whew. Can we say one euro? Whoops. There. Yes, we can. OK, so admittedly, that's a little bit gratuitous use of method missing. But again, as with most, so this, by the way, this is kind of a standard litany. You show people things in Ruby or Rails, and they say, oh, that's cute, big deal. But then what they don't, they don't take the next visionary step, which we need to get you guys to all take, and realize that the possibilities of what you can do with this go far beyond this trivial example. So suppose now we also want to be able to deposit other random currencies. Well, you know, we could, right, you see where I'm going with this, but we could also ask, is there a dry way to do this, a way that re results in don't repeat yourself? Okay, so here's what we could do. Go back to Pastebin. Metaprogramming to the rescue. Let's make the text a little bigger. What are we doing here? OK. We'll just define a whole bunch of conversion factors. Right? We'll just define a hash whose keys are the names of currencies that we know, and the values are the conversion factor to dollars. And when method missing is called, we'll chop off the trailing S, just in case. Um, and if we know that currency, then we'll just multiply self by whatever the value of the currency conversion is. And if not, we'll just punt up to the superclass which is what method missing should always do if it uh, has no other recourse. 
Right, so let's just uh, make sure that the demonstration actually works. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, so this is really the next step. Method missing can be used to do a lot of things that don't obfuscate your code. They actually can make it more beautiful, but it takes a little bit of getting used to to see how the machinery works. So let's, you know, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, what's, what happens when method missing is called? Well, first of all, we reopen the numeric class. We defined a class variable, so all instances are going to see this, right? We can access it from anywhere within the class. And all we did was define some conversion factors. Uh, and then when method missing is called, the first thing I do is grab the method name. I make sure it's converted to a string. And I substitute, if there's a trailing S, remember in a regular expression, a dollar sign anchors the string to the end of the match. If the trailing S is present, I remove it. And then I can look up the name of the currency in this hash and just multiply the value of self by that. And if you think this is cool, there's an example in the book about using the same kind of approach to build XML documents with arbitrary tags. It's beautiful. It, it will make you weep. Okay, so kind of what's, uh, what's the intellectual high order bit here? Um, because you can ask objects questions about themselves at runtime and define new methods at runtime, um, you can reopen any class, you can add stuff to it. These are mechanisms that, if properly used, can actually make your code prettier to read. Right? It is not anathema to open up the string class or the numeric class and add basic things to it if it's really in the service of more readable code. So in addition to subclassing, extending a class, and all the other stuff that you can do in conventional object-oriented languages, um, you get this sort of additional power for me being able to do things at runtime. And just you know, kind of as a contrast, if we wanted to do something like this in Java, right? you can't really just modify the integer class and add methods to it. Uh, you could define a new class of your own, which inherits from integer and does everything an integer can do. But then everywhere in your program that you want to take advantage of the special powers, you've got to make sure that you use your version of the class and not just plain old integers. And if you're then trying to interoperate with another library that uses integers, then woe be unto you.